Um, all right. Uh, there's no one here. <laughs> so chair report. Um, so I did want to, there are two things that came up since the last meeting. One is, sorry, one. one is something that we don't really have to discuss per se. Um, and that it, but something to be on the radar in case at some point we do have to discuss it. Um, and that is uh, Austin Prep is uh, doing this project and they're going to be putting in some new, some bathrooms and I guess it's an athletic complex and they requested, they weren't able to connect those in a feasible way to the existing sewer system. So they had um, considered requesting a tight tank variance and Laura appropriately asked for more information on that and then forwarded that to me and then I asked for clarification from the DEP. They said that you can't do a tight tank on school property. So they're gonna have to, their engineers are gonna have to come up with another plan, which will then go presumably back to Laura. Which I talked to Jean about this the other day and there might be a way to go, they're gonna talk with okay. legal. Oh, okay. About it. Up yeah. Pass. Um, so w when we looked at the regulations and there were those two requirements, yeah. one pertained to use and the other pertained to ownership. Okay. There's um, another the way the regs read. I'm paraphrasing. You uh, you're not allowed to do a tight tank unless you have a failed system, septic system, mm -hmm. which we don't have. Mm -hmm. But there's two exceptions or three exceptions, and the third one says if it's town owned or town um, used. Yeah, the DEP. I, I asked the DEP about that, and they said if it's on school property regardless of if the town uses okay. it it cannot okay but yeah i have a call we'll with, go through that. yeah <laughs> the, I, I have a call into that. our town council uh, yeah and alex who was here last time Perfect. and she was an attorney at dph right. so i thought maybe yeah. there's a way I, yeah you yeah. know probably grasping at straws but um mm -hmm. it's just so we have looked at every yeah, yeah. possible no, definitely. scenario yeah. Uh, but if the school issue raises the red flag, then we'll have to go to plan B. Yeah. What is a tight tank? Is it like their own septic tank? It's an actual tank. It's, yeah, a sealed tank that would need to be underground. Pumped into our sewer. Pumped out. No, it's, no, it's the same thing as like an underground tank, storage right? tank for fuel. Yeah. Except it's not storing fuel. <laughs> um, yeah, and they would just, because the wetlands and so forth, and it's a remote area down by a tennis court that they're putting in. So it really, there really was no feasible alternative. And so their engineers came up with this. And it really wasn't on the plans in any detail. So when it came up, we were kind of like, okay, you know, yeah. what is this? How do we get here? <laughs> How do you spell that? Type of tank. Oh, type. Just the word. Yeah. Thanks. So it's the same thing as a septic system. It doesn't have a leaching field and a distribution box and all that. Just like she said, just holds it in. Yeah. You just pump it out into a truck. Oh, okay. Glad that they came up with that. Yeah. So if there's another avenue, like maybe just going with porta potties would. Yeah. You know, would be, that might even be a better alternative all the way around and just have them there. It's only for when it's nice weather. Right. Um, so that really is a fully self-contained way to address it. Yeah. Without getting into all this. And because it's so low down, you'd have to pump it up True. to do, yeah, so that's yeah. the problem, yeah. to hook it up to the town sewer. So that was DEP? Yes. 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 Um, uh, the second thing that came up since 
the last meeting is coronavirus. Mm -hmm. <laughs> COVID-19. Yes, COVID-19. Um, Laura's posted to the town website a letter from the state and an informational sheet from the CDC, and I think about a week and a half ago, links to the state and CDC coronavirus websites, which are going to be regularly updated. Um, I've been following it very closely. Um, so I don't really want to say a whole lot because we just don't know a lot. And so, you know, don't want anything to come out and be misleading or misrepresenting. But, um, you know, I think over the next few weeks, there's going to be a lot of data coming out. I know that there are currently clinical study, active clinical studies um, looking at existing antivirals as potential treatment. Obviously, there's going to be more information coming about disease transmission and burden and in the long-term vaccine development, but that's very long-term. Um, for a second, I'm going to do a soapbox thing, um, which is uh, to say there are two things that really fuel the flames in a public health emergency. One is disinformation, and the second is distrust of federal and local agencies. Um, and the first really feeds into the second. Um, it's really important that people carefully vet their information sources. Uh, science and medical communication has long been a challenge, and it's one that training programs have um, relatively recently begun to address. Um, and that's in the reputable news category in which um, the onus of verifying um, sources and information lies largely with the publisher. The rise of unregulated social media and alternative news outlets puts this onus on the receiver of the information. And I've already seen misleading reporting coming through on Apple News on my phone. Um, so please reference legitimate source it, resources such as the CDC, journals like the New England Journal of Medicine and Lancet, and academic institutions like the Harvard School of Public Health, Harvard T.H. Chan School of Public Health, excuse me. Um, they're actually having a Facebook Live Q&A segment tomorrow at noon. I think that's called the Harvard T.H. Chan School of Public Health forum um, on their Facebook page. Um, and that's titled Tracking the Coronavirus Outbreak. And I think they're going to have another forum in early March, um, which should come up on their website at some point or through their Twitter feed. Um, and lastly, I want to uh, draw attention to the researchers, the public health officials, and journal editors who are working quite literally around the clock to analyze, manage, and report openly on this epidemic. It's truly a global team effort. Um, currently, the risk of coronavirus infection in the U.S. is minimal, very minimal. Um, the best thing you can do to protect yourself is what you should already be doing in flu season, which is wash your hands with soap and water frequently. Um, and to put this into perspective, Lancet published a study in 2018 that found 291,000 to 646,000 deaths are annually due to the flu. That's a much larger number than what we're talking about right now. Um, and on that topic, flu-like illness activity in Massachusetts is very high as of last week's flu report. Um, and I think you'll probably see that in Laura's health <laughs> agent report. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, 28 inspections, 7 re-inspections. Um, just, just a point of interest, separating the inspections and the reinspections ends up being more helpful down the road when we do our yearly report. Okay. So it actually works out even better. Oh, okay, perfect. Um, just an FYI. Okay. Um, we had nine complaints. All nine of them have been inspected. Seven were corrected, two are pending. Nothing, just one's a yard and just nothing, nothing life-threatening or anything like that. Uh, no animals inspections because it's cold and raining and I'm waiting. Uh, we had two septic abandonments. We only had one flu shot administered, which is a little late in the season, but we did have one. As you can see, we had one maven, 
uh, two, ma uh, two things in Maven, one Pepsi and 39 flutes. We did do 16 tobacco inspections, two of which did receive violations, both for selling to underage okay. people. They were ticketed. Okay. Um, at one location, the person who served someone underage was fired. At the other um, location, they retrained. And actually, the second location in question already paid, so we're waiting for the other person to pay their ticket. Tickets were issued. Okay. Uh, recently, January 23rd, so the other people just paid like super fast. We issued 111 permits this month. We're almost done with permits. There's one person and then we can close that off with permits for the year. But that's the breakdown. Um, Daniel and I did recertify for CPR and AED this month, and we're, um, the fibrillators. Oh, okay. And the food code. I gave you a separate package on that. Oh, oh here. I didn't write my notes on everybody in case everybody wanted to write their own notes, but page one, the top three sections, 102, 12, 20, and 11, top three. Mm -hmm. That's just that the person in charge serves safe, their paperwork and stuff like that. That's the only difference there. But everybody has to have it anyways in writing, so we're already there. The next section, which brings you to the bottom of the page, is um, reporting illness. So just the first page, Eleanor. <laughs> yeah. That one. Yeah. Okay, yeah. <laughs> So 220111, this just all talks about the new way that they want you to report it. Yeah. Again, not that difficult. Yeah. Right. Um, the next page, um, 2401, bandages, the right kind of bandages, finger guards. The cleanup vomit kit is 501, which we talked about last time, just that they have to post a sign that says, this is how you clean it up. This is what you do with the cleanup. This is what you do with the with the bandages. Mm -hmm. And the rest is really stuff that we're already doing. So those are the only real changes. Mm -hmm. So I don't think it's... Easy, huh? Yeah, I, I would say look it over. Okay. Me and Jean have looked it over in detail. Vote on it next time if you want, or come up with questions. If you put it in. I don't think there's anything that would stop us from doing that. And we did have to reschedule Stop the Bleed at the fire department. So hopefully we'll get that this month, but there was just not enough time to do the CPI, AED, and Stop the Bleed. So we're working with them on that. And two more things, sorry. Um, the advisory board committee that you were going to go to with Kevin, that was canceled and is rescheduled. That's the new Arcasa? Yeah. Okay. Um, is rescheduled for February 26th at 5.30. Welcome to Reading. Oh, right. <laughs> yeah. So we have a welcome to Reading evening at the um, at the library. The health department is going to sign up for a table if you guys want to come by. If yeah. you want to sit at the table or whatever you want to do, I signed us up for a table. Oh, okay, I did too. Oh, okay. <laughs> I thought I was going to. Oh, sorry, I thought you wanted so to. So I can, um, I guess, contact them and just make sure we don't have two tables. Okay. I can, if you want me to, I can, or you can, or Lisa runs that, right? Yeah, I'm actually on that as well. Oh, but, perfect. Um, yeah, I think the table assignments, you be your best to just contact Lisa and say we can have one table. Lisa Egan. Okay. Lisa Egan. Sure. You want to call her or me? Uh, well, you already know her. Okay. <laughs> sure, thanks. That's the new resident open house. Okay, perfect. 
It's Lisa, yeah, right? I'm happy to go. Yeah, we Lisa. Okay. Go. But anyone who wants to is welcome. I think we were just thinking if, that we have to post it as open meeting, or if you include oh, right. it in your report, then we don't have to post it. Is that what you said? Um, I didn't want to change the agenda just right. to mention this, right. so I said I'll mention it in my report. Right. Oh, you. But oh, okay. But you. Oh, mean, if when we actually, actually go, actually go we, have we have to post it. it if more if than you got, one of yeah. us. Yeah. So if it's me and you, it's fine. But if it's me, you, and you, then we need to post it. Okay. Really? <laughs> I have 30. People have jobs. I know. <laughs> okay. Well, it'll, so it'll it all depends. Just, just you? Unless Kevin goes, I guess. Or no. you guys I think you might go. Um, <laughs> okay. <laughs> so it's the three of us, but that. Okay doesn't cause a quorum, so okay. it's all set. Okay. Great. And um, so it's basically like a meet and greet. Everybody's going to have a stand. You go around, you see all the different, like, who was there last year? Um, it was the health departments. Um, yeah. Um, veterans of the veterans, yeah. Elder Green services. Club. Right. All the departments that really are um, facing do, doing services with there the was community. businesses too because I think there was a yeah, uh, fitness pizza. together right mm, in the back left hand corner yeah there was um it was definitely there yeah <laughs> and like the uh, uh, Demichis R M L D yeah the oh, electricity yeah. people the yeah. fire department yeah so was walkable reading there I feel like they were there I want to say historic maybe it was historic yep yeah, historic was there I'm almost positive fitness together was there as well. Mm -hmm. So I think it's open to businesses as well. Yep. They um, do a nice job. They give away little goodie Swag bags with all things from the different agencies, different groups. Do we need like a, a goodie welcome bag? bag. <laughs> <laughs> put coupons in there. Hand <laughs> sanitizer. Give them the new food <laughs> code. No, we can give them the new food <laughs> code. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> so, um... <laughs> we'll be at that. That's it. Anything I missed? I don't think I missed anything. I think you good. I like this. The having the printout of the the disease mm -hmm. printout because mm -hmm. I like that you can see the trends. As the well. trends. Yep. Yeah. And you know, you're still not violating everybody's information, right. but yeah. No, it's useful to see that this mm -hmm. actually is impact key. Yeah, flu season. <laughs> yeah. Here as well. So year to date, we've had 48 cases of the flu, 39 just last month. Yeah. 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 And that's not even including my son. Are you sure? <laughs> oh, no, he he did, we didn't, we oh, didn't have him tested, but I'm pretty sure. Oh. <laughs> I was going to mention him, but I didn't know. No, no, no yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I knew that week I knew four people in four different towns who had the flu that same week. So it's definitely going around. All right. So the next thing is a um, oh, round table. The only thing I had for round table was that um, Howard Chan School of Public Health just had a forum actually on vaping, which you can watch on their website if you want. It's an hour long, so <laughs> make sure you budget the time. But um, one of the big takeaways was that manufacturers um, now of um, e-cigarettes are going to have to provide data, I guess, by May to prove that there's a therapeutic or cessation value to their product. So um, that will likely, yes, for selling any e-cigarette. Yeah, well, so only really the larger companies are going to be able to afford to pay for that mm -hmm. process, mm -hmm. presumably. Um, and then the other thing uh, that one of the panelists mentioned is that um, the flavors are very problematic um, and... In fact, the chemicals used in the flavorings have um, been regulated in workplace environments because that was this the original popcorn lung thing that happened in the early 2000s. Um, 
came from one of these chemicals that's a flavoring. Um, and so there are all these, uh, well, there are regulations and then there's um, uh, a lot of labeling that has to go in for, for all of those workplace settings, yet these chemicals are in the e-cigarettes and there's no specific labeling for them. So anyway, that was, that was all I had. Uh, if no one has anything else, we can go into the 2020 goals. So, <laughs> this may end up being a little bit all over the place, I suspect, but... <laughs> we'll cover some of it next time. <laughs> yeah, I think so. I think this is going to be a long process. And, um, and then I sort of came up with different things after the last meeting, which was one of the things that I thought of, um, Jean had mentioned, well, so Kevin was mentioning uh, the possibility of getting a new strategic plan. Um, and then we we're trying to figure out when that would go, we would have to request that in the budget, right? So I'm wondering if we should kind of have a timeline of some things that should just happen every year. Like every August or September meeting, we should have a discussion about any budget requests. Is that a good time frame to do yep. it? August, September? Yep. Um, just something that's always going to be on the agenda for that Yep. We meeting. start working on budgets in October. Okay. So having, starting that discussion, that might be it. Yep. Uh, good idea. Um, that was one thing. Um, and then, and then doing um, goals. Do that in j every January or December. Renewal of any goal ideas. I feel like starting in December was a good idea. Okay. December. Just to provide a little bit of structure. Although that being said, budget requests may come out of goals. Mm -hmm. So maybe we should do fiscal year goals? Sure. That sounds good. <laughs> <laughs> so we would start in what, like March or something? Like the goals for 2020 would be March 2020 to March 2021. Is that? I don't know what the yeah. fiscal year starts. Fiscal year, that'd be fiscal, fiscal year, year 21. 20, 2021. Because right now the budget that we are bringing before town meeting in April is FY21. When does that go into effect? July 1st July. of okay. so it's like 2020. Yeah. Yeah, so it's the end point, June 30th, so maybe 2021. So we should match our goal setting with the budget. Mm -hmm. Does that yes, seem like that it makes sense. more sense? Mm -hmm. OK, so then <laughs> change that. And then so October is when the budget is set? No, we or start so in October. Start. And then when is it? Um, we do we do the select board presentation the first week of December. There's usually a um, finance committee meeting a month or two before that. The, the finance committee gives us guidance on what they think they would be willing to go along with for broadly the, yeah. the general overall budget. And then we um, come back after the holidays and the town manager, it's his budget that he finalizes and presents to the finance committee. And then um, we all, department heads and whoever wants to go can go in March. The finance committee meetings, they review each individual budget and then they either vote up or down and then it gets on the warrant for town meeting in April. Okay. And town meeting is the body that appropriates funds so they 
they vote on the budget at annual town meeting in April. And then that's for July 1. So, so planning in August, whether it's goals or budget, probably still makes sense. Yeah, maybe. But just group it together. Group it together, mm -hmm. yeah. There's just like months and months of the review committees and approvals. Yeah. Like that. Go through. Yeah, maybe one meeting could be mostly focused on a, as a planning session. Yeah. Yeah. Two. Yeah. Or two meetings yeah. of it. Yeah. yeah. Or two for goals. I feel like we've been I know. trying to get I, our goals. I know. Maybe we'll have them by August. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is our first I'm, attempt. I'm, no, 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 no. I'm, not, I'm not criticizing. I think this takes its time. And for us to think through it, I think we're doing all the right things. Yeah. It just takes time. Yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Great. <laughs> Have some idea of a timeline. I did not yeah. have any of this before. Um, so, budget request and goals will be put on by the chair on the agenda in August. Yes. Sorry, I'm sure that's right. No, yes. Um, all right. So, I mean, you were bringing up that last time Kevin talked about, could we do a yeah. strategic plan? Could we renew that? Which was similar to what I was thinking. What do can we pull together to review um, anything from our previous strategic plan where we were hit down or something like that? Could we check in to see if we still need improvement in those areas or if we're doing fine? I know that's asking, though, for time and resources, so I don't know if it's possible for us to do that um, or if we need to base our current goals on what was needed in the past when we had this strategic plan. Um, do we have a sense of whether or not it's feasible to try to assess whether or not we made any improvements on what the 2015-2020 strategic plan listed as needs improvement? Or like I can say some of the categories yeah, if that's that, helpful. That's helpful, I think. Um, I think developing so it looks like as we were talking about before, there are these ten essential public health services that the consultant used to identify sort of where we fell. Are we doing a great job? Are we doing like in the middle or do we need improvement? And we could go based on those sort of ten public health services, or we could decide that there are really five of those that we want to focus on in Reading. But I think developing an external communications plan, disseminating population-based educational material, um, working with new and existing organizations, which I think we have demonstrated that we do more of now, participate in central meetings, partnership with primary care, outreach to isolated individuals, and then um, discussing joint initiatives with public service divisions, the health department, council on aging, recreation department. Um, I think those were the main ones. And I apologize, I can't actually access the internet right now, so I can't get online to look at the link that you sent for the strategic plan. Oh, um, um, here. But I have five goals that sort of followed from that. But I don't know if that's something as a board we think is really needed anymore um, or not. <laughs> because we don't really know whether or not we made improvements already. Right. That, so we don't need to any longer address that stuff. But I do think well, it would what, be. What are they? Um, <laughs> the goals. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, creating a community health data portal. So that came out of the strategic plan, which I think is, we talked about this a little last time, like a lot of the permits have gone online, the, the permit process has gone online. I think this was data that maybe we do make publicly available, like, you know, um, the MAVEN report or, um, 
you know, even like the health agent report. I think the notion that the consultant was coming up with was some sort of online way that people in the community can quickly find health-related information about Reading. So that was one thing they pointed out. Another was inform, educate, and empower people about health issues, which I think we do through our website, but the consultant had noted that as an area for improvement. Um, outreach for support of policies, that was one that I hadn't thought about as much, but, you know, like maybe posting editorials in the paper or things like that, or educating people, kind of like you did, though, just now with the coronavirus, <laughs> you know, educating people about that. So I just have two more <laughs> that all came from the strategic plan. Need for a nurse navigator. I think we talked about that one last yeah. time, though, and thinking that we don't really need that now or that we had, like, two positions that were sort of covering that position. Um, and then the last one was evaluating effectiveness, accessibility, and quality of personal and population-based health services. So that's another evaluation of what services we're offering here in Reading. Um. So, <laughs> yeah. so I know that um, I think well before I was on the board and I think well before Kevin was on the board, there was a period of time where the board was publishing, they were writing mm -hmm. pieces for the local papers, mm -hmm. right? They had like a, I think they had a space reserved for one, maybe one article a month. I don't remember. I think that's right, yeah. Um, but I also, when I was at the MHB um, conference thing, they, there was another town there who did a lecture series. And they actually, I think, worked with some of the other boards and commissions because there are some groups where there might be overlap, um, you know, with, um, like with the climate change, you know, or, or something, and they could find someone together mm -hmm. that might be nice although that might cost some money unless there are people in town who are willing to do it well we um actually we've been talking about this as well we did do the um the lecture on ticks yes and then we did another one on rats that's yeah. true yeah and we were literally talking about this a couple of mm -hmm. weeks ago if you have a topic but there's nothing Right. Yeah. Well, right. Well. I mean, unless the the new the new Arcasa, um, I could see that as being something where um, this board could get involved in some outreach, veterans. Yeah. Um, We've been talking to veterans yeah. right now. He's, you know, it's winter. He's not out as much. Well, he's obviously out, but he's not like doing things at like the cemeteries mm -hmm. or anything like that. So there's nothing at this point. We were trying to come up with something also. Mm -hmm. That the, would be, you know, joint. Yeah, a collaboration. Mm -hmm. We do join with the um, senior services as far as, like, flu clinics and things like that. Mm -hmm. But there's no outreach for that. Like right. that you, don't, you don't have a lecture on, we're going to have a flu clinic. <laughs> we just book it and do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, the topic of substance abuse is mm -hmm. such a big one. And... Mm -hmm is so prevalent and, and disconcerting around across the community and affects everyone really. That might be something to think mm -hmm. about. Yeah. Yeah, I know the schools are pretty active. The PTOs are pretty active in bringing speakers in. So um, you guys can come up for a topic. Yeah, we can. Fortunately, there's no issues. <laughs> right. <laughs> well, I was thinking, I mean, we could do survey to figure out what people, what people want, are interested in. What people are interested true. in, but at the same time, our, you know, I, 
what health problems do we have here that we need to be working toward? I mean, so <laughs> I just found this like two hours ago, or I would have sent it to sure everyone. She did. <laughs> no, I really did. Um, but um, Melrose Wakefield Hospital, who I think they're the they are Hallmark Health, right? Mm -hmm. Hallmark Health is under mm -hmm. them. Um, they actually do a community health assessment every three years, and oh. they have one from 2019. Did I feel like Jean Ford did maybe. us recently, or maybe it was Winchester. It was a community needs assessment, because I think in our strategic plan we had said, because we lack resources to do things like our own needs oh, assessments, okay. we can rely on like sort of comparable towns. Yeah. Well, this um, one includes Reading. Oh, really? So they okay. have data from Saga, Stoneham, Everett, Malden, Melrose, Reading, and North Reading, I think. That sounds Perfect. right, yeah. And um, and it's really interesting and might give us a starting point awesome. for some of these yeah. things. Yeah, um, so I can send that, yeah. I can definitely send that. I wonder, too, if there's um, the strategic plan previously you know, use these 10 essential public health services. And we don't have a sense for which ones are really important to people in Reading. Um, so are our, our, our goals something that we even want to get feedback on from the community? Like, post, like, <laughs> I mean, I'm envisioning people like voting on our website or something. Like, here are the three goals that's we're considering for the it year. It's like that's what they did. They met okay. with like a group of constituents, mm -hmm. I think. Um, Key informant select, interviews. Yeah. 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 Members of the select board, other like liaisons with community um, groups, and had like interviews or like a focus mm -hmm. group um, to react to, like to goals. The economic development coordinator is that the title of the position like she sent around or posted a a survey a survey yeah. so um you know we could certainly do a similar thing if we knew what questions we wanted to ask and what options we wanted to provide mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, are we thinking that developing another five-year strategic plan is something we have to do? Is that like a, a, an uh, assumption? Uh, I don't know. I, I don't, I don't know, know that we would have, I don't okay. think that we would have to do okay. it. I think it okay. could be like a useful steering. <laughs> yeah. But and I, and I only ask that because I think this was really thorough, but A, we don't have resources like that right now. Oh, yeah. I think um, it's really helpful to have a short-term and a long-term view. Yeah. And depending on who joins and who leaves the board over years, this is a good guiding reference document. But a lot of it, I didn't really... A lot didn't necessarily resonate with me. I, there were definitely some key threads that I recognize outreach and collaborations and policy that we work on, but I would hate to spend a ton of time and attention on crafting this like perfect five-year strategic vision and have it be done four years from now right and, and then yeah. in, you know what I mean like right. yeah. I'm very much a, like let's go let's do it let's yeah. put like an outline together and go yeah. instead of like planning something thing thing. yeah so I was talking to a colleague who um is the CEO of the Merrimack Valley YMCA, and they are doing a different type of strategic planning where it's not the coming up with all the objectives and figuring out whether or not you meet. You probably know more about this than me. He's going to send me resources, but he hasn't had a chance to yet. It's called like real-time strategic planning or something, and I think what you do is you figure out sort of like the four principles, say, of our board, and then when anything new comes up, we check in with those principles and mm -hmm. to make a decision like, okay, sure. if it aligns with the principles, yes, we want to go forward. If not, then no. Mm -hmm. So it's a different type of planning process where it's still coming together and being strategic about how to focus your efforts and spend your time. But yeah. instead of the sort of extensive document here, it's supposed to be 
way for you to move a little bit more like quickly a working, in real time. working tool kind of yeah. like a reference yes. tool so we could also I mean, I like that the idea of that right i, I mean, know enough of the details to yeah i mean i think this is that. really valuable because it gives you a sense of what they were thinking but five years is a long time mm -hmm. yeah and things move slowly <laughs> yeah um, so yeah i mean i think most of the five your piece of that was for staffing, mm -hmm. and the rest was just yeah. sort of open. But, but, or um, maybe part of the annual goal process is checking in. If we yeah. do develop a five-year plan, mm -hmm. maybe every August we check in and say, is this still relevant? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think what happened when this was originally, there were staffing changes that happened. Um, and then I think the main thing that the board transitioned to was that educational outreach mm -hmm. component, which has kind of fallen by the wayside. But it sounds like everyone here seems supportive of bringing that back in some capacity. I think supportive, but it seems like we need to know what we to know we're what, talking about. What, yeah. <laughs> yeah, what do we want to do outreach about? Yeah. Um. And now that we've moved from the model that was described in here and, and the regional model right. to having our own full-time person and related staffing, right. that's, that's a different model than what was referenced mm -hmm. here. That's true. Different capacity. Right. Yeah. Right. right. Five years is a long time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> to say next. I know, I know. Because <laughs> I feel like we are making progress towards something, but I don't know what it is yet. So we haven't quite come up with goals for the year. Um, well, I think it's hard because you're looking to do outreach, but there's, like, we've done outreach, mm -hmm. but we don't have a, a thing to outreach on right now. Right. So or, not, right. Like, or a sense of like, was the outreach we did last year helpful or right. beneficial? It was great. We had a way. huge turnout. We sent how many letters out about the the rats? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. thousands. Yeah. yeah, but it was it was a good turnout. It was well, it was it went great. But we just don't have a yeah. Yeah, I think maybe we can. We don't have any maybe issues plan to, outreach. to be more proactive. Than reactive like for yeah, I think some that's a good goal. of this. <laughs> um, so you know, like we can maybe have someone come and speak on uh, organic pest management or something that mm -hmm. might be in line with the pesticide regulations. Right. Um, regardless of when those happen to, right. Well, that, that would be good to roll you know. out once that pesticide thing's done. Yeah. 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 Um, and then. Because the rats were definitely reactive, but the ticks right. were that's proactive. proactive. Yeah. Exactly. And that's why we've been trying to come up with something with veterans and. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I really like substance, I mean, not I really like substance abuse. I like the topic of substance abuse because I think it's really relevant. Um, yeah, it's an all the time thing. Mm -hmm. And um, it's one of the top needs that was identified, behavioral health, which yeah. I know Anne Marie, that's her area. Well, and substance abuse is just one part of right, it. Right, of behavioral health. Yeah. Um, no, wouldn't that fall under Erica, though? Like, would we just go and with that? Well, we could, that could be a partnership thing, right? Yeah. Like, yep. we have that she's going to. Yes. Who's there? Uh, yeah. Uh, Emory's going to the meeting, with, uh, and she's taking off with Kevin. Our, our oh, Erica's our CASA. Yeah. Okay. Who is Erica? Erica's the woman who runs our CASA, the new. So coalition. Thank you. Some sort. We're all going to be calling it a different. Well, I, yeah. Advisory Board. Advisory board, that's what it's called. Okay. So I understand that, you know, the tick lecture was successful. So I don't know what other people think, but 
it's okay to possibly do it again. Mm -hmm. yeah. If you had a good turnout, right? Yeah. There's still a lot of people out there, I'm sure, that didn't come. Mm -hmm. Maybe not out of disinterest, but out of lack of time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Because mm -hmm. that's definitely relevant. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, maybe we could time certain times of year yeah. when like ticks are mm -hmm. problematic. We could record it and have it oh, available maybe on our website. That would be a really oh, great yeah. idea mm -hmm. because then do, do we have RCTV we, probably, yeah, if we could schedule it so that RCTV could could be there, that would be great. Oh. Do we have anything, any videotapes from last year or anything we could use again? I don't know if they recorded that. I'm not sure. Um, and thinking about different areas too for outreach, and obviously we can continue to think about this, but it looks like um, the Winchester Hospital Community Needs Assessment that I think they reference in the strategic plan, their top five target areas were addressing social determinants, so things like age access, um, education of the population, contributing health problems, uneven distribution of access to care, mental health, substance dependency, and chronic disease. So um, yeah, we could maybe have like, you know, five top things that we know, at least in neighboring areas or in the country, are typically public health problems. <laughs> and then we could also have rotating things like ticks and rats, <laughs> you know, where maybe over the year we plan four different topics. You know, we're still struggling with chronic disease, so diet and physical activity are important. Um, but then we slot in topics as they emerge. Maybe. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think that sounds like a... Social determinants is like quite the hot topic. <laughs> it is. Like idea if we like focus on those categories. Yeah. It is, and there is some of that information in the community health assessment from Melrose Wakefield. So, okay, I, yeah. So, does it seem like these are issues in Reading? I mean, so Reading, yeah. Um, here. Okay, this is. I feel bad because not everybody can see it. <laughs> um, but I Maybe will tell you. Pull it up. Maybe. Okay. Oh yeah, that would be cool. Um. <clears throat> Do you want me to email you the link? How do you want to get that? Because <laughs> it's no. a long... Do you want me to take the can computer Google over? It? Can so that Google it? You can Google it. Right. You can. Is that up? right up there? Okay. Let me make sure I can get the technology to cooperate. And so are we looking to see which one of these five things look like issues for Reading? Um, yeah. Okay. And they're... They have them sort of highlighted. Um, Reading versus Massachusetts. Okay. Cool. And I can, once that's up, I can give you the page number. It's the Melrose Wakefield Community Health Assessment. Are you online? Yeah. I am. Although I haven't actually. What page is it? Town guest is what I'm. Uh, page one o five is the summary specifically for Reading. Community health needs assessment. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Things are happening. <laughs> And then it's the 2019 summary and report. And then um, Reading's summary. It's actually 
page 110. Yes. Oh, it is. Yeah. I mean, it's 105. Oh, yeah. On the okay, page 110. <laughs> there. Yeah, it's really this useful. Is great. It's yeah. so great. Isn't it? I was like, why did I find this two hours before? <laughs> um, but generally, so compared to the other towns that they've got on there, um, where we've got lower po poverty rates, um, but our, I guess they've got health conditions down below. Um, oh. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. It's the one that really stuck out to me was the mental disorder related mortality. I'm actually not really sure exactly how they define that. I'll have to look yeah, back. I'm so surprised. Yeah. You're also, what? I'm surprised about the heroin emergency department visits. Yeah, um, what we see in North Reading is fentanyl is the main thing that people are overdosing on, but um, um, we can definitely do. Oh, that's SNAP. not so that two oh, not oh, snap. So supplemental nutrition assistance program. I didn't realize that we would have people here. Um, yeah, and so all of the communities actually have this. They call a snap gap, which is that there are a lot of people who are eligible no, 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 and no, don't take though. it. Yeah. Well, the number two, right, of the top three causes of death, dementia, mm -hmm. that does technically fall under the mental health disorder. Mm -hmm. so that's oh, okay. In the DSM. Mm -hmm. Like in the DSM. We could do and something on that with the elder DSM. services. Right. And we have dementia friendly reading. Oh, yeah. very active. Yeah, so oh, that might be a good. Also. Very active. Um, educational. Oh, they have their own website mm -hmm. and lots going on. I mean, some of it will, I think, honest, like some of it can be us promoting the other services. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Right. We don't need Because to. I think sometimes people just don't know they exist. Right. I don't know they exist. And I'm right. more to help. So <laughs> I'm sure there are people in the community right. who don't know that. Yeah. Um, so are we thinking we could use, let's say, the snapshot to guide our goal creation? I think so. Mm -hmm. What do you think? What At you, least what is for the educational outreach piece. Mm -hmm. I wish we knew what age group some of these were in. Like, is this something that we need to roll out in schools? Or is this something that, you know, like Yeah, and I don't think the work. state gives that, gives age. For the substance? Or for any of for it, any yeah, of when we're thinking about education. Can you scroll back to the where it's at suicide. Right there. So it's a uh, so it's around the same yeah. as Massachusetts. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. All opioid overdoses were heroin? I guess for the, oh, right. I guess that's what the NA means. Right, that there were no non heroin visits. I don't know if, I assume NA means zero. Yeah. Maybe they didn't collect that data or something. This is a great document yeah, to look it at and it's really help useful, us, I think, guide. I think. So what are, what are our next steps? <laughs> like, I feel like we've had a great mm -hmm. conversation. What's the, like, what do we do to prepare maybe for, because I think we have a couple more things to talk about too tonight, and I feel like we're not going to get our goals done 
tonight. tonight no. <laughs> this is us figuring um, out how to do great. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so that by the August and September meeting, we'll be able to do that. Exactly. <laughs> and, yeah. That's our first goal, right? Yeah, our <laughs> first set goal. Goals. Uh, right. Set goals. <laughs> Because I think you want to talk about the National Food Retail Program. Oh, yeah. Too. Well, that's, or yeah, that would be within, within goals. goals. Okay. Um, so, I guess, educational outreach, and we can maybe all independently sort of go through this and come up with whether there are topics, you know, that we all think would be useful. Okay. Um, figure out where to go from there, maybe. Sure. So topics for potential outreach. Yep. And then we. And then, well, I guess we should okay. talk about how we want to do how we would want to do the outreach. Would we want to do it as a lecture series? Would we want to also do some written articles? Um, I think you need to figure out what the topic is and then figure out what segment the best that you're trying to that, I guess that's true, right? Because obviously, the communication. Cause either you're gonna not going to do like a Facebook live stream for people that are like you need to. Right. <laughs> Fair <Yeah>. point. <laughs> I mean, maybe. Fair that point. <laughs> okay. So for the next meeting, we will also miss assessment out. And then we will make a list of topic, potential topics. Um, something that I think Bob had said, the town manager had said to me, was a suggestion on um, doing a forum with the other public services groups um, that I think would be to see if there are any things we kind of want to do together. Um, I don't know. I mean, I know you talk to them periodically, probably routinely. <laughs> um, I don't know if it makes sense to do something like that, um, just to brainstorm, like a brainstorm session. Mm -hmm. I don't know. There's um, a lot of social services, community services that happen in a lot of places in town. Yeah. And um, one thing that we talked about, and I've seen it done before, is maybe having a a town-wide um, services summit okay. and it could bring all different factions of the community together because there's so much that we all do that's interrelated and like one of the things that human and elder services does routinely every month is they sit with public um, safety yeah and that they would collaborate be useful. yeah and they actually have an ongoing collaboration, but um, they sit down once a month and they do that kind of collaboration. Um, so it could be public services with the, the different divisions uh, under the community services umbrella. So that would be recreation, health, veterans, that will be our round table that we have every month. Yeah, but the board now may be taking a different perspective and bring all those divisions together with Elder Human Services and um, all those services groups in public services. And maybe there's an opportunity to have a combined meeting with the various boards, maybe the recreation, maybe um, Council on Aging, um, and see bring all these people together, you know, what is everybody working on, what's going on, and have that first maybe introduction, and then maybe think about a broader community-wide social services summit and see, you know, who why is doing stuff. And, um, all these different groups are working on different things, like even Melrose Wakefield Hospital. So many people 
are, you know, working on this wellness and different things. When you're saying summit, do you mean that it would a summit would be sort of a secondary follow up meeting where we're actually doing planning, or it's well, not like a fair where people from the community come to see what we're doing? It's almost like um, the way I've seen it done is you try and figure out where the overlap is and where the opportunities are for collaboration. And hopefully there isn't a lot of discovery about duplication, but I'm imagining with all these groups, you know, the churches and everybody doing a piece of this, there could be some level of duplication. And if everyone worked together, there might be an opportunity to streamline that and get more done. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it sounds great. So what you're saying is like the round table meeting that we have as all the department heads just it would be the boards of all the departments. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, maybe even the select board wants to, you know, there, there could be other boards yeah. that we're not even really yeah. thinking about that have an interest in this. Certainly our CASA. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but other groups out there like the why or the why um, I don't even know it's almost like you would have to really put a big long list together of yeah. everyone that's working on this mm -hmm. yeah and just like invite yeah. everybody and yeah. say we just want to figure out who's doing what and how do we all work together to yeah move forward yeah I think that sounds good yeah and then maybe an outcome could be like a directory where do you go for this? And yeah. Where do you go for that? Yeah. I mean, does everyone know that we have all these incredible resources related to substance abuse? Not. <laughs> I don't know if everybody knows that. Yeah. If somebody's in family is dealing with this, where do they, how do they process? Right. And do the medical providers even know? I mean, do the churches know? Mm -hmm. I'm guessing they do, but maybe not everybody knows. Yeah. Yep. And maybe then ultimately there's something that gets distributed, whether it's posted online or... Yeah. Um, it would be good for public safety to have easy access, pretty access mm -hmm. to that directory. Yeah. Because, you know... Mm -hmm. I mean, the people that are in doing this work probably off the top of their head know all these things and yeah, they refer to you, actually. <laughs> so they're, that's true. they know all this, but it does. I don't know that it exists in one place that you could say, these are all the things that we do in this community. Okay, so cool. we could work on us coming up with a list of we would want to invite. Mm -hmm. I think I'm getting stumped on whether or not, because I think Laura was thinking, do we start? Are we trying to say we start with the boards, have all the boards meet, and then at that point we can start opening up to like churches and the why? And, okay. That probably makes sense to start yeah. on a smaller basis mm -hmm. to just yeah, start the so, dialogue, yeah, and then go to a larger format. Do you like you as the chair email the chair of all the other boards or so what I would recommend to talk figure about out this, yeah. which boards we to, wanna. Yeah. I would I would recommend going through our um, administrative services director, Matt Cronellis, because he's sort of our communications person. Yeah. And before we go off in one direction, just to make sure we're you know, maybe they're planning some other thing that we don't know about. Them. So, right. Oh, geez, I wish I would have known that. Right. So, because I know this has been discussed from time to time mm -hmm. about doing like a board summit to talk about, you know, conflict of interest training and open meeting law. You know, that may be in the works in some other form. So just so we all 
-hmm. are communicating well, it wouldn't be a bad idea to just vet it through him mm -hmm. and say, gee, we're thinking we'd like to do some sort of a round table with the other boards. Um, is there anything else we should be thinking about or? So you're going to reach out yep, to Matt? I can Matt? reach out to Matt. anyone have anything else not food related? <laughs> uh, actually, one question I had, um, the Medical Reserve Corps, I don't really know anything about the Medical Reserve Corps. Yeah, either of you know it. <laughs> so it seems... I'm a girl on food. <laughs> <What's Yeah. that? laughs> I'm thinking that might be a useful thing. That's right, volunteer uh, people from the medical community, right? This is related to the, the goals? Yeah. Okay. So, because I think one of the goals that they had said was partnership building, and I had highlighted um, Medical Reserve Corps as something that would be useful. Um, particularly as we're talking about potential epidemics. It might be nice <laughs> to know uh, that we have a broad medical reserve court, and I just don't know anything about the state of the medical reserve court in this area. But it sounds like no one here knows, so that's something to, <laughs> to just <find> independently <laughs> I find remember out. them talking about this, and I believe it's it exists. Yeah, I haven't I'm heard sure any that. updates in a while about yeah. it. I'll, I'll, I'll look into it. It'll be a quick thing. Okay, so food. So we're, uh, I guess we'll be moving forward with the... Or at least reviewing the food code changes to uh, see if the one this is the yeah to the twenty yeah the twenty seventeen food code so we'll all look through that before the next meeting. Did you make this? This is great. <laughs> I would love to take credit, but because <laughs> <laughs> you mentioned making one, and I was like, wow. <laughs> so I was like, oh, I don't have to. Look. This is nice and easy. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and then I don't, did other people look through the standards? Was there anything that anyone was particular, any of the standards that people were particularly interested in focusing on? Um, you talking about the 29, 2017 food code? The, no, the, the fallen. <laughs> <laughs> I'm never going to get it. The Voluntary National Retail Food Program Standards. Whether we actually enroll or not, but were there any things that people found particularly interesting in them? I'm, I'm lost. Are we under goals? Yeah, We're under goals. goals. Okay. <laughs> um, so for me, I think standard three, which says, HACCP principles. So, um, risk assessment categories and corresponding inspection frequency. Uh, because some types of places aren't really high risk and don't need, shouldn't necessarily need to be inspected as often. Uh, and some are much higher risk and may need to be inspected more frequently. That might be a nice thing. To look through and then um, the rest are all written policies which may actually be included in your SOPs 
but I don't know. Um, writ the written corrective action policies, the written variance request policies, and the written policy for approval of HACCP plans. That's a, yeah. <laughs> Here we go. That's much easier. So plans. Um, that one seemed intriguing, and then and that was number three. That was number three. Um, I had put training down, but I know you guys are all up on training, right? So there's always something new. There's always something yeah, new, I suppose. But um. And then um, the so if we want to break it down one at a time, yes. The first one where you don't inspect all the locations as often, and yeah. you you number them, yeah, based on how often, yeah, you actually reduce the amount of inspections you do at certain locations that uh -huh. are not as high risk. Uh -huh. But the way we do it now, we go above that number, okay. so you'd actually re be reducing the amount of inspections that we do, which, don't get me wrong, I don't have a problem with, <laughs> but now you're doing more, you'd actually be doing less preventative stuff yeah. and letting those places go longer without doing inspections. Mm -hmm. Again, I have no problem with this, <laughs> but you're... Are there any places that, with doing that system, are there any places that you would do more no. inspections? No. Nothing would get more. Everything, Everything would, would either stay where it is less. or some okay. would get less. Okay. So that's number one. Number two was training. There's always more training. There's always new things that come up. It was There's, the written policy. Oh, the written but policy. That's in the SOP. In the SOP. Yep. That's all. Right. HACCP's all in the SOP. Perfect. The, um, you'll only certain places require a HACCP plan. Yeah. And the places that do require a HACCP plan, like um, OIS, for example, because they have um, a lot of fish and sushi and stuff like that. They have their own okay. SOP. Mandarin has it. It's in their file. It's like, okay. it's the places that have it, have it, and know they need it. And it's part of, it's already part of the routine. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, you know, any place that has fish has to have it, has to have it. So it's not something, yeah. you're not creating anything new with that one. Okay. Training, there's always new mm -hmm. things that come up. Like we're, we just did CPR because we were up, mm -hmm. and we're going to do Stop the Bleed when we can get in on that, but there's always different things mm -hmm. you're looking at down the road. Yeah. Uh, That's the um, next one. Yeah. Another thing, I can highlight it here, but was the foodborne illness and food defense preparedness response and response. I think that, I think that's... Is that? Oh, okay. <laughs> it would be covered right here in the in the new in the 2017. Okay. Which okay. is the whole second section of oh, right the reporting. Yeah. Right. Two, two oh one eleven all the way down to the middle of the next page. That is everything that says the new things, the new things you have to report, um, how you have to report them. You know, fevers. Just glancing at this quickly. Yeah. Um, there's different sicknesses that they now want you to report that you weren't reporting before. So by putting the 2017 into effect, you cover that. Okay. And we've got, and I assume in your SOPs, there are SOPs for investigation, or is that a public health nurse? That falls under. Is that fall under? That falls under your Maven report. Maven. Everything that there's a foodborne illness, the yeah. calls, and everything. And then the state has whole separate forms okay. that are not in the SOP because they're a state thing that we follow different okay. when the nurse gets it through the Maven report. Okay. But that that would all fall fall under the Maven. Okay. So, isn't the the food thing? <laughs> Program standards, like signing up for that, it just means that we would need to show all of this work that we yes. have done. Yeah. And so I, I remember before, and I apologize that now I'm asking you to have a conversation again the second time. Um, did we decide last time that we may not want to sign up for it because maybe it's not all relevant to us? I don't know that it's but. not necessarily. I think it's all relevant, but um, it would require a lot of stuff.
staff hours, I think, okay. to go through to the assessment process. And then you have to get um, outside experts to come in and then verify your own self-assessment, um, which that's why people sign up so that they can get the grant money to cover mm -hmm. that. But it's, it's a big thing. Um, the self-assessment part, just that part in and of itself. So the first section is very actually difficult. all sections that you have to go through and test on and everything. Yeah. I've actually already done it because, mm -hmm. because I was in Malden when they were doing it. Oh. So I've already completed all that. The next thing is categorizing all the locations as to what grading system. Again, no problem with doing less. But why? Yeah. Like what's, you the, have, what's the amount of time? Right, you have like, the, the right. time and the manpower to cover them. So, but we don't, so the hang up, I guess. So it's, and the way I'm thinking about it is that we acknowledge that we've done this work and then we get this recognition for saying that we're a member of this National Food Retail Program Standards thing. Do you, I'm so, sorry, do you get the recognition if you're not part of the coalition that does it, Emmy? Uh, any community can sign up to do it. Even if you're not part of the grant? Yeah, I think it's just to, like, I don't know, you are, you appear on a website as the town of Reading has adopted these program standards. Um, but I think not as part of the grant. Like, it sounds like, I don't know. I think they're, yeah, I think we would have to apply for our own grants to do, if, it, you know, if it came to having to pay for people, to come, consultants to come in to do whatever, that would be our, we would have to, we're not, yeah, we're not. Aside from of, being on this list, uh -huh. what's the benefit? Right. right. That's, I think, is that what you're yeah, trying to ask? Yeah, that's what I'm asking. <laughs> oh. But I'm also wondering, it seems like if we've already done all the work that's required to get right. this, then why not get, like, the sort of acknowledgement that we have, we're meeting these standards? And it sounds like maybe the reason not to get that acknowledgement is that we would have to spend a lot of time to show the yeah, work that we've I already done. I think that's, yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. Is that? So are we putting it to bed? What are we doing here? I don't know. What do you guys want to do? <laughs> do we want to vote to like put it to bed or not put it to bed? We would, have to, to we would have to come up with money for this What's outside that? validation, whether it's a grant or whether it's a budget line item, right? I was thinking, and I'm sorry for not knowing this myself, but that when you sign up, it's free to sign they up. Basically, give you, you then apply for a grant then with them. Apply for a grant, and so the odds are very high that they would give you the money to do this assessment. I or, yes, although the at least for the first, so people tend to communities tend to apply for grant money for very specific parts. parts. Oh, parts. numbers. So they, not so small. they don't. Yeah, they don't ask for. Okay, money for one through nine, it'll be like, okay, we're working on, um, you know, standard number three or whatever, and, you know, we would like X amount of dollars to hire somebody to come in and, you know. So you would, like, apply, like, every year for one of these to do, and then you have a certain number of years to I think you have to them? complete them in five years, but I'm not positive. I think we should survey people and find out if they care about this. Because <laughs> <laughs> right now it's just informed people that know about this that are making decisions. Mm -hmm. I think I was, I, um, I was thinking of it as a roadmap of best practices. Mm -hmm that could be a good target for us. Mm -hmm. And if we thought that there would be an expense involved in achieving those, then if we signed up, we could get grant money to offset that. Yeah, but that's, that's what, but I think, you know, it makes sense for us to really 
go through the standards and um, and maybe for us to see your SOPs, then we would know, like, oh, check that off, check that off, check that off. Well, right. yeah, but you don't check it off. Then there's a full the detailed product. audit that right. comes oh, in. Oh, no, I know. Oh. oh, I know. I don't mean for you just mean for, for us. them. I mean for us. Yeah. <laughs> I don't mean for for the whoever. Yeah, because then that. then they come yeah. in. Right. And That's they have a whole a full thing. detailed audit. You take it. You you're talking a lot of downtime where you're not yeah. doing inspections and not yeah. working on. Yeah, it's a good program. Don't get me wrong, but um, it's, it's a lot of work. I, just yeah, to be on the I, list. I think I was I was thinking of using us checking off as our goal to achieve sort of best, best practices, practices as sense. opposed to a formal. Signing up, for, Signing the up for the program. Okay. Okay. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So add it to our 2020 goals. <laughs> Is that what you're saying? Um. I know. I'm sorry. I'm just asking you for a clarity. <laughs> no, <laughs> I, I get that. I get that. Um, I I I think maybe this will be. I guess we sh we should. Yes, <laughs> I guess. I mean, I'm just thinking that I don't know how far we'll make it through, but I guess it just—it's yeah. just a goal. <laughs> so um, we can add it as to the list of potential goals. Yeah, we haven't chosen our goals yet, right. so maybe we just keep this open for yeah. now and then revisit. Yeah. Until we know what the right decision yeah. is. Yeah, it's okay. five yeah. years to complete it. Our strategic plan is good. <laughs> I think it's five yeah. years to complete each section. Oh, really? Oh, Are really? You know, you know, five years for the total? I don't know. I don't know. I they thought give thought you, was... Do they give you money per section? I can't get it. And I know yeah. the first section has a lot, a lot of classes and tests. What's it called? The voluntary? Uh, the voluntary national, national food. Retail food program standards. And then the second part was reclassifying all the inspections, one through three, I think it was, or five. You know what I mean? Three, it's right? One four. <laughs> right in, in the middle, middle. road. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So your convenience stores will yeah, yeah. be lower. Right. Then, yeah. So right now you're doing the convenience stores sure, twice. twice. Yeah. And this would drop the convenience stores yeah. down to one. And you're doing your food places twice, and this would keep them at twice. Which right. one? What ones are th the? Three it's not or three four. times. It's just the category, and I don't recall exactly what falls under what. But um, it, it it changes. Some of them you can drop down and do less often. Some of them you can take off the list completely. What but nobody the, gets more. What are the higher risk the categories three and four? Do you? Do um, you your, your major food places like your like. Big store. big restaurants, grocery stores, and there's so and so everything above a category, a risk. I forget what no, I forget what the numbers are, but they'll get two. Okay. Some people will drop off completely, and some people just get one. Okay. Right now, everybody oh, gets some two. Some people drop off completely. Okay. okay. And won't need permits. There's a plus. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, they won't need permits. No. If, oh, wait, if what? Sorry. So if you're saying go, if we adopt this program and follow the rules like if, as they if have we them, do the risk assessment category, yeah, then some places would not be risky enough to merit doing an inspection. Right. Which now everybody gets two, but some places won't get anything. Totally up to you guys. We don't have to decide that. Right. right now. We don't. We don't. <laughs> Okay. And we won't. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I know you like, like to move. <laughs> Let's do that. Let's move on. All right. I work I in love it. corporate. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Was there anything else that anyone had? No? All right.
to re-review the minutes. Present. It's two words. And there. And it says mayor mayor instead of Marie. <laughs> Quick to see a downside of just typing. <laughs> All right. So should I make a motion to yeah. accept the meeting minutes as amended, accounting for Anne Marie's name is spelled right? <laughs> is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Three zero. Motion passes. Oh. Yeah. No, forget it. Nothing. <laughs> you sure? Yep. Okay. Uh, I have a question. Yes. What's the update, Laura, on the public health nurse? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Has, it yet? Has it been posted? Yes, and we have a couple of applicants, and we're working on, um, we have a couple of things on the calendar for holds for times, and I think that HR is just trying to confirm, so hopefully we'll get a few um, interviews. And that's part-time? Yes. RN, LPN, does it matter? RN. Anything else? No. I move to adjourn. <laughs> Second. All those in favor? <laughs> 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 <laughs>